This man has done nothing wrong. He's telling you what you did wrong. Because you did wrong. We deserve what we're being given. What we're being given. It's funny because there's a, 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 a I won't say the word because people say it all the time. A dichotomy. But there's a dichotomy, right? Because the split is at Jesus Christ. Will you trust him or won't you? Because at the end of the day, they did the same thing. That's why he said, he said, we deserve. If you want to say, we deserve it, that man obviously know what the other man did. And he also knows that it was wrong. He said, we deserve. Which means he knows what he did. The other man, he knows what they both did. But there's a dichotomy where one person believes that they deserve what they're being given. And one, per one person doesn't. At the same time, there's one person that, that, that's, been that's been given the punishment and has accepted it and one person has not. Either way, you did it and you're, you're being punished. And the Bible does not call them two murderers on the cross with Jesus. It calls them two thieves. This is, a, this is a harsh topic with me because I've always thought this but never said anything to anybody. That these are thieves. And I struggle with God because this is a really harsh punishment for a thief. And I say, Lord, but, but they just stole. Right? They, they just stole something. right? And what if it was a loaf of bread? Remember, I was telling you guys about the Sesame Street little song. Now, it wasn't a song, but it was almost like um, this little girl, a little cartoon. They used to have the little cartoons pop up in between. Now I watch Sesame Street. I'll try, I've tried to watch Sesame Street recently, and I thought my eyeballs were going to fall out of my head. <laughs> I just, I, it was just too much. Like, I was like, what is going on here? What is wrong with these things and these Muppets? I don't like that. Every, somebody's always moving. Sound! So, <laughs> I'm going to focus on one thing at a time. I was like, oh, I can't do this. It's too much for me. It's overstimulation. It's overstimulation. I'm going to have to go call the doctor. It's going to be something wrong. I'm going to have to, no. Mm -mm. But the, the, the look of the Sef, Sesame Street in my era was meant for me and people that are my age. Eras after mine, it had to be, it had to be brighter. It had to be more Elmo. It had to be more stupid. Because Elmo, what's wrong with your voice? I mean, I love Victoria. I say she's my Christian Elmo. And I love Kirk. I say he's my Christian Elmo. But there's a reason. Because they act like Elmo to me. They act that's just so adorable. They are adorable. They act like what most kids see when they see Elmo. Like when Lily looks at Elmo and Samuel looks at Elmo, they get excited, right? So I get excited when I see Victoria. I get excited when I see Kirk because they act like Elmo. To me, I love them. They're my Christian Elmo. They're so sweet. So sweet. Hear me? So sweet. <laughs> but I can't do it. I get a little bit of Oscar in me. Oh, God, Baba. There's a little bit of Oscar in me. I cannot. Yeah, I'm a grouch. I, I'm a little bit of a grouch. I am. I'm happy. I'm a happy person. I wake up happy every day. But I have a little bit of grouch in me. To the point where my happy is facilitated by my grouchness. Right? And I, they, they play off of each other very well. My, 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 my one thief is Oscar and my one thief is, is Big Bird. Y'all know they're the same person, right? It's a woman that plays both Oscar and Big Bird. Same person. Big Bird will get on your last nerve. He's so happy and sunny and bright to the point where you will be asking God, please send some Oscar. Please. I have children next to the TV praying. Lord, send Oscar. Send Oscar. Send Oscar to us. Because Big Bird is extra. Like he just, they, they, if his feathers itch, you ever seen him scratch his feathers? Too much. <laughs> Too much. Too much. I don't like it. Because he's sticking his beak into his feather spot and just start, his whole feather body starts shaking. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, I pay attention to everything. I don't like that. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> don't scratch. Just itch. No, you itch. You sit there and you itch. That's it. <laughs> I like it. They do. I like it. But it seems like there was one. Me being, me picture myself on the cross with Jesus, right? Yes, that's pretty arrogant. But it seems like there's one, right? To, we're saying, okay, that there's a dichotomy. Because they both did the same crime and they're both being crucified for the same crime, right? Punished at the same time. The only thing is, uh, right? One thought one way and one thought another. Now catch them on another day. It was dark outside, right? It was dark by that time. It had already gotten dark. Maybe. Maybe. But let's 
say it was um uh, that, that, let's say it was uh, raining. May have switched up a little bit. That one thief that was being a little bit more logical, a little bit more heartfelt about the fact that they sinned may have been upset because he was having a bad hair day. Whereas the other thief may have felt a little bit better about it. The rain's hitting my skin. I've got screws in my hands, but the rain's hitting my skin. I'm okay right now. <laughs> Based on how we feel, you never know what side of me you're going to get, do you? If you don't know that I love rain, <laughs> Now see, and, and, and nobody knows, I'm fully expecting and fully aware about the fact that I'm probably going to have to wake, not wake Harmony up, but I'm probably going to have to like nudge her a little bit. And when she comes to get me, she's probably going to look like she's really tired. And because and I don't, I've never asked her, but I, every time I've encountered Rain and Harmony, she always looks sleepy. And I'm like, yes, Rain, pew, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> it's, I just don't see that in Harmony. I'm like, hi, Harmony. And she's like, what well, uh, <laughs> Same person, right? Same sin, same person, same consequence. These people can be twins. All we hear them say is, we hear them say one line apiece. And it seems to depict where they end up spending eternity, that one line. What if that was my life and I got one line to say? If you have one line to say, right? They each had one line. He said, uh, 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 the, the one thief uh, uh, mocked Jesus and said, um, uh, if you were really a savior, you could um, get, pull yourself off the cross and then pull us off the cross, whatever. And then the one man said, he said, he said, uh, he said, uh, be Christ. He said, this man has done nothing wrong. We, our crime, we get, we're getting a consequence for our crime. But he's done nothing wrong, right? He says, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom. One line. It's a five-act play, Shakespeare's plays are. You get one line. How do you treat that line? Do you treat it like it's the best line in the world? And when I say I'm going to say this line with the most fervor, or do you get mad because I only got one line and stand off to the side, get a megaphone from the back um, room and, and say your line from the back room? <laughs> Don't even go out on stage. It's one line. And better yet, so that's just the attitude that you say a line in. But better yet, so what would you, if you had one line, what would your line, right? God knows you and so do you. Let's just be honest, you know you. So since God knows you, what would your line be? I stand here looking at my door and <laughs> Levi, Lorelai, and Jonathan drew me pictures. And Sophia drew me a picture too, but she drew me. <laughs> but they drew me pictures, they all do giraffes. Because the kids know, they know me, they know I love giraffes. But most people don't know that about me. I love giraffes, love them. One line God knows you. What would your line be? Hey, okay? you one line. Standing in front of me, close your eyes right now. I'm giving you one line. And this line, right, comes from your heart. And, and it's not, here's the thing, it's not what you would say. When I ask you what would your line be, I'm saying what would God cast your line to be for you in a five-act play. Meaning, right, what line would he have you say in the play based on who you know and who he knows you are. One line. Now. Open your eyes. Close your eyes again. And what I want to ask you is it's going to be a really crazy thing. I'm going to ask you to put yourself on the cross and not in Jesus' spot. You're not going to be in the middle. You're on, off to the side, off to the side. Because even when I die, even when I die, even when I get my consequence, I'm going to be on the side of Jesus. I can't have my own spot. I can't even have my own and hill. I got to be on the side of this man. And check this out. They didn't know who Jesus was. So when faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, that man that did uh, the good thief, I won't say the good thief, which is no such thing, but that man that was a was open to it actually had a heart that was prone uh, for the gospel because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He had to overhear and hear people talking about Jesus and in passing find out who Jesus was. Disciples did not uh, go up to the cross and try to save him and smack him with bibles. A Sean from my last church pull out an organ and start playing. Did not happen. One line. You're a thief on the cross. One line. 
your thief on the cross. Are you angry or are you happy? Usually when I'm angry about something, especially when I, even if I get in trouble, I don't care if I get in trouble for something, I'm in trouble, right? But it's something that I did. I'm in trouble, right, for something that I didn't do. I got attitude. I got attitude. I got attitude. I try to keep my attitude to myself, but oddly enough, I mean, I think the man's a genius. Like, he actually sees through my attitude. Like, he sees, he, he knows when I'm mad. I try to hide it. But I just, I, I'm, I'll be around you, but I won't say anything to you or look at you. And he sees through it, which means, what, what did that tell me? I'm going to have to start dealing with the ways that I approach anger because that's not appropriate. Right? I got to change. One lie. That's my lie. I got to change. What's your lie? On the cross, you're the thief on the cross. You stole a, a loaf of bread and you're angry. What's your lie? You're the thief on the cross and you understand and you, 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 you understand your act was reprehensible even though you're starving. You had to steal a loaf of bread. One lie. The issue is it never tells us what their, 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 their thing is or what the thing that they do is. But we are forced to put together a five-act play, right, based around Jesus. But because Jesus died next to them, right, it's not that I don't, I don't get my own inhale, I don't get my own hill to be on top of. You're going to be on Mount Mariah, I'm going to be on Mount Mariah too. Why can't I be on uh, Mount Mariah, uh, 785 Mariah Street, down the street around the corner, or a larger circle, or over die away? Why can't I, why can't I have my own uh, mountain to be on? I don't want Calvary, because you're going to be on it. You get all the glory. I don't want that to be my story. Why well, not? I got to share with you. My story matters only because of you. He had an attitude. But wouldn't you? We think, oh, the thief at the cross. He's a jerk. He says I'm real jerky. But I can't say that I wouldn't have done it. I don't know you. I've never met you. And everybody's paying attention to you. And I'm dying here. I'm in pain here. I'm naked here. And what did I steal that's worth this type of punishment? And I get what? One line? And here's the thing. My one line isn't featured, right? It's not featured as one of the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. It's also not featured as an answer to. Or it's not featured as a, an opening statement, right? That Jesus would use um, one of his statements to respond to what I said with. Do you understand? Jesus had uh, seven last sayings. But the one statement that said, today you'll be with me in paradise, was to the other thief, right? So even though I'm dying here, I'm upset, right? I should be upset. And here's the thing. I may have stolen a loaf of bread, but did that loaf of bread make it to my family? What's going to my kids after this? Oh, you save the world? Take yourself off the cross. And, and help us come down too. One line. To depict everything that I'm thinking. We both have kids. We both stole the same thing. Right? Because that's not say that they stole something for themselves. We both have kids. We both stole the same thing. Right? I can't believe nobody put this together with uh, the, 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 con the, con this, the concept of the Les Miserables story points to this desperation. And yet, and still, I hear, I heard. I, from the moment I heard somebody going to jail for a loaf of bread, I said, hmm. Immediately my mind went here. It's like, what, 10 years ago when I heard about Les Miserables? I've never seen it. But I think about these men. You don't have a story. You got one line. And today you'll be with me in paradise, right? Points us to Jesus, the relationship between Jesus and who? That man. But there's another man there. And I'm not saying that we go out of our way to feel bad for him. What I am saying is consider him. When you are giving everybody else grace. Thank you, Lord. God just said it. When you're giving everybody else grace, remember to give him some grace. Consider him, right? Because it was a bad situation. And just like Judas, these men were chosen. They were, I don't want to say they walked into it, but they were predestined for the purpose that they walked into but the Bible says, whom he calls, he, uh, he predestined whom he calls. Whom he calls, he justifies. Whom he justifies, he glorifies. Pastor David had me mem uh, memorize. He didn't have me memorize it, but he kind of drilled that into me a little bit. 
So it's not that God makes me do it. It's just that everything is put to um, before me and I choose. One line. I choose my line. I choose my line. I choose whether I lie about it. I choose whether I'll be found lying about it. Maybe think about the ghetto. And I thought about that little thing from Sesame Street, that little ditty. Right? I was going to tell you guys about. I told you, I mentioned her to you before. She was a little girl, and her, her name started with W. 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 She kept saying W. It's so weird, because I'm, I'm thinking about it. She has a raspy voice like I do. Like I do. Like a little raspy voice. And she goes to the store, and she said, Mama told me to get a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. I will never forget this. Never, this just one. I don't remember, I don't remember. I mean, I remember, everybody remembers because it came on every time since she came on, right? Remember this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, 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 elf, right? About when in the 90s they tried to uh, beef up Sesame Street a little bit and add nigga jazzy. So that's what that little, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, right? Wiki, wiki, eh. My generation. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. She's walking to the store, a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. And something happens when she forgets one of the items. Goes back home and then has to go back again. There was the butter, right? But it reminded me of being in the ghetto because I had to go. Whenever I was, um, something was needed from the store, Tasha was not there. So I was up to go to the store. Tasha wanted to go to the store when we were living on grocery. But then when we moved, right, Tasha was living with them kids. She was taking them kids. So uh, she was not there. So I was, I was up, right? I'm 10 years old. Now, mind you, there was always shooting around there. But I, uh, hey, I was, I was, hey, I put my headphones on, a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, a stick of butter. I did exactly what Wilhelmina did. I would say it over and over again until that I would not forget it. Because if I forgot it, Lois was making me go back. Didn't matter. She wasn't going. So you say it over and over again until you remember, right? But in the ghetto, right? A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. I'm going to not be going for a loaf of bread, a container of milk, a stick of butter. I might go for a loaf of bread and a box of butter. The box, right? They had the thin box, and Imperial. I remember that. The thin box with the five, four, five, four or five sticks in there. But milk you get from the grocery store. You never get it from the bodega. Just a little, just a little subtle nuances. I felt like I was that little girl. I said there's certain things I would not get that she got from the bo- She got from the corner store. I would not get from the corner store. It was a black cartoon, a little black girl in a black cartoon. And she, it, was, it wasn't anything about race, but she was just walking around with a loaf of bread, amongst the butter. But she had a, it was, it was an African American girl. And so I felt like I could relate to her. I could be her. I could be in her shoes. Except there's certain things I would not do. I wouldn't get milk. Maybe a loaf of bread. Probably not because you never know what a bodega, how old that bread would be. So there's two things on that list that you would not see right in my back. If I got home, that, maybe eggs. But at the end of the day, right, going to the bodega, spending all that time going to the bodega and trying to get to these three items, right, that she could get from her corner store, right, to these three items. I'm trying to get these three items, right. I, it might be better for me to just go to the grocery store. I love to go to the grocery store and get what we need. Because you know, the ghetto, it has everybody in it, right? And everybody's just stuffed and piling it and they're angry, right? But their bread, their milk, and their eggs. There's certain things that are staples, right, that we need. And most people that grow up rich, you would not imagine going to the bodega, the corner store, for a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. But here's the thing. Me seeing her do it made me feel so much better. Because Sesame Street is showing the cartoon with a little girl going to the corner store asking, I think what she's going to get, a loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. She's doing exactly what I would do. And so I'm thinking. So I relate to her. I 
to relate to her, but it's very easy to see both of us on opposite ends, right? Both of us on the cross. I couldn't see a cartoon on cross. I mean, y'all understand what I'm saying? But it's just, it doesn't matter. The cross is not racially driven. It's not uh, ethnically driven. It's not ethically driven. The point behind the cross is that I must pick it up. She said, pick it up and follow me. We each got a cross. It's nice to look back at, at situations and look at them and see who you are or who you would be if it was me. I, I, don't have a, it's a, I feel like discipleship, I feel like learning from my pastor, I feel like learning even from his Andrew, I feel like it's, it's interactive. So I'm not, they're not just telling me stuff, it just filling me up with stuff. A part of me learning is saying, hey, I hear what you're saying. Showing that I learned. Because if Caiaphas had learned before Jesus died, we'd have a problem. Seeing, they may not, they may see and not perceive, and hearing, they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Lest they should turn their sins be forgiven them. The, the, the point is, right, that he would not stop anybody from, from turning. If they turned, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. Right? You have to worry about being forgiven. You turn, it will be, you will be forgiven. It will happen. Right? Take heed what you hear. Go to verse 24. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has to him, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him, more will be given. Why did he say it twice? But whoever, whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. God said, when you are your sign in lines and assigning addresses for people on the cross, And we do it. I know I'm not the only one that does it. It's not that I put people up there because I want to crucify them. No, I put people on the cross mentally because once you do something to me, it's like, oh, she did the worst sin in the world to me. I see it that way. But the thing is, we've got to be careful because the scripture here talks immediately about seeing and not perceiving. I need to perceive. Me seeing you do something to me is one thing. But me understanding, hey, they, maybe they were desperate. Maybe they just were having a bad day. Maybe it's not about me. They just were doing. Maybe, 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 maybe. There's a, there's a, but with, with Jesus Christ, there is a definite uh, crime in using the word maybe. But with your brothers and sisters in Christ, there's a definite uh, gain, a definite goal to use the word maybe even more. I've been telling myself maybe this week so much so. That I think I forgot, and I said, "Wait, Lord, I don't want to be stupid." Cause I get forgive anxious. I get too happy with forgiving. I want to forgive you, but I, I, even when I say stupid, I mean at the growing up, I was. I, they said I was stupid. Cause they, you both forget, Grandma. You both forgiving and forget. You both forget. Jesus for your sins, right? East from the West, Grandma. Tell me the sinner, Grandma. <laughs> she said, "Jamie, but Jesus, not asking you to be stupid. You went back to the same people." And you're confused why they did it to you again. And my family members who saw it hate seeing me, hated seeing me get hurt. But I didn't know how to prevent it. I don't know how to protect myself and love you at the same time. And that's what they, what, 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 what they were asking me to do. I felt like, no, if I love somebody, I got to go out there and throw everything to the wind. And this is why I'm so very stringent with my heart now, which is not an excuse. But this is why I became stringent with my heart. Because I became, because I, after you get hurt so much, you realize, wow, the moment you put yourself out there, people look for a way to hurt you. But I'm reminded of that, that quote Jesus gave that Martin Luther King kind of took from him a little bit. 
When my man slaps your cheek, you turn the other. I said, the blood of Jesus. But now I'm saying yes. He's not asking me to be slapped. But that's the concept of turning the other cheek is exactly what Pastor David is teaching. He's not asking me to be abused or be slapped more than once. But there's a level of love in not, if you could be shrewd. The reason why um, the Bible says that a lot of people are not one is because of the fact that Christians aren't shrewd. If you be shrewd enough to, I don't have to be open to you slapping me. But if I, if I can let you know that I love you, even after you slap me and then slap me another time. And I can let you, make sure you know that I love you. I can win you for Christ, you slapper. <laughs> but I can win you for Christ. It's not what the, the problem is not in the, the slapping. The problem is, is it's in the shrewding. The Bible uses shrewd. We're not wise enough, right? The wise man, like Pastor Dave says, the, 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 the inquisitive student, I think, he says, I don't know, I just I, I listen to everything that man says. And so it, I don't know. But he said the, 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 the wise man, right? The one that's shrewd. The one that's shrewd. The perfect person that you have running for president does not like everybody that's um, his constituents. Everybody that says, you know, or in, in England they're running for king or lord or whatever that is. He don't like all his constituents. He don't like all his people. But the wise one will be ruling it and make everybody in the, um, his, his constituency think that he loves every single one of them. And I was thinking about Pastor David this morning. I said, wow, that's him. Consequences come quickly. <laughs> I run in the opposite direction. But I don't doubt for one second that that man loves me. I don't doubt it. If these people hate me and they slap me on the cheek, and I turn my cheek and they slap me again. I need to figure out a way. Because God's not asking me to excuse the slapping. We focus on, you better say that thing, Pastor David. Ugh. God's not asking me to excuse the slapping. We focus on the slapping. The slapping is not the point. The slapping is for you. You slap me on the face, right? I turn, you slap me again. I turn, you slap me again. I turn, you slap me again. Why is the slapping for me? The slap, we think we focus on the slapping so we think how do I stop the slapping the slapping is nothing but an end to the means the slapping is your chance to see every time right this is how not to make you think I love you I love you and I want you to feel loved but I need to find a way to love you so that it, you do not feel threatened by me or threatened by my love the problem is not in the slapping it's in the shrewdness. The problem's not in the stopping. It's in the execution. You hear them say it in a project one way, and don't tell Levi because I don't know if I'm supposed to be watching this still. But <laughs> you, you hear them say it all the time. It's in the ex. Your problem is not in. They say either people have problems with construction or people have problems with execution. You have problems with putting the thing together with the right boning. Like I put boning in, on Miss Andrea and Pastor David's paintings. They probably don't know what that is. It's glue. It's actually, they'll look at it and say, what is that? But it's glue. And it's what I use as boning. I can't paint. But I know how to make art. But I know how to make stuff. But I, and I'm not to make it look like art even though I'm not an artist. I can't do art. But I'm creative. So my problem would be in construction. It wouldn't be in execution. Because I can execute anything. Or anyone. Mm. Likewise, you have people that, 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 that are excellent in construction but can't execute. I'm great in conceptualization. You better know your... I said I, I got to know my... My, 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 my strong point. I'm fantastic in conceptualization. There's a head in my living room. Let's just say that. A head glued to a board in my living room. And I bought eyes for it and everything. There's a head in my living room. It's not a bust, but it is a head. So I know what I'm going to do with it. I, I, just, I know what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm fantastic in conceptualization. Terrible in construction. But awesome in execution. Know your strengths. Pastor David makes, he, we all know. The thing is with everybody in that church, he loves everybody the same. And we can all have the exact same relationship with, like I, the relationship I have, that I have with him, everybody else can have. Discipleship, whatever that is, when he decides to do it. That teaching, that father, yes, anybody can have that. We, there's no doubt in my mind that he loves everybody the same. 
if everybody's not being discipled by him, there's also no doubt in my mind because of the fact you don't want it. Come on, there's been a lot of consequences. So I had a lot of time to think. <laughs> that's how Jesus did it. If you were in Jesus' presence, that's why John lay all on top of him. That's why I want to go sit and I want to sit uh, with my, I want to sit on this end of your neck with my legs around <laughs> and get a piggyback ride. And I want to hold on to Pastor David's head for dear life. But I don't want to ever let either one of them go. I, I, I never had. Like that, I, I raised my soul. So for people that need that, whether you be 85, that's why I said this one, when I'm talking about, I'm praying that she will get an opportunity to feel the love that comes from these two people. Whether you're 85 or whether you're 5, I think you feel just as loved. I don't think there's anybody in that church that doesn't feel loved. 